How many years has it been? Holy shit. Well, there's a lot of new people here, so let me get through this. Let me talk fast because we don't have much time. I don't know if I can talk that fast. Oh, look at that. We're still standing. Let's give ourselves a hand. Yeah. And I remember trading this stuff in the back alleys, in the back of the park, in the, in the uh, uh, Whole Foods. I remember a lot of things. And uh, I could have never guessed how fast this would have grown. Uh, I like to say we're still standing. I mean, we went through all these things. I know you new guys are saying, oh my God, it went down <laughs> from 20,000 bucks to 6,000. I mean, come on. We've seen it go down. We've seen it go down from 30 bucks to like, I don't know, 50 cents, I think. And we've seen it go down from 1,200 bucks to, to 178 bucks. So, no big deal. That's my first computer I built with a soldering iron in 1978. I built a modem by hand. That's not mine, but it looks like mine was worse. It's called a modulator demodulator. I sold political data for many years. I got, had a lot of politicians get involved with uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I think one serving time now. I'm just joking. Just joking. Uh, not for that. Uh, domain names, so in the early uh, 90s, you know, I bought a whole shitload of domain names and uh, everyone thought I was nuts because they didn't even know what the internet was. It's sort of like, uh, not now, but maybe last year, but now everyone knows what blockchain is. Everyone wants to get involved, and I love that. I want everyone to get involved with blockchain. I think it's our time. I think it's the first time in uh, humanity that we're allowed to actually take our uh, worth as humans and uh, control it. Instead of all these other uh, greedy little fingers and uh, politicians and uh, uh, all these jerks trying to get a hold of our future, meaning our saved, you know, our money, I believe that, uh, you know, the whole world, everything should be uh, tokenized. I was like, oh, but it's going to dilute the this and that. I think, uh, you know, mass tokenization, uh, it's going to render like universal mean, means, mediums of, of trade uh, worthless. So I think uh, there's going to be software, more wallets and stuff. They're going to trade a whole bunch of 13-way trades instead of a one-for-one, one, you know, because back when the uh, trade was invented, not trade, but currency was invented or gold, people used something, shiny uh, feathers and stuff. They... Uh, they wanted to do a three-way trade or a four-way trade, and they couldn't figure out how to do it. So I think now with technology, we, got, we can take care of that. We can do like a 1,700-way trade probably. Yeah, I was early, built uh, no more hotels, get a room. In the 90s, it was really like 96. That was like an Airbnb precursor. Livery cab, no one had a smartphone. I'm always early. Who's that, Kamal? <laughs> I knew it. He wrote Liberty Cab right there. Uh, all my guys, most of my guys are with me since the 90s, early 90s. We built a lot of stuff. Uh, whoever doesn't know about the blockchain and is hearing it for the first time, not first time, but actually delved into an event like this one, you got to take 30 days and study it so you can also be a disciple of the blockchain and throw your life away for your own freedom. You're not going to throw your life away. You're actually going to get your life. Uh, it's like the wheel was just invented and we're a bunch of cavemen and it's rolling down the hill and everyone's laughing that it rolls. <laughs> Some people before the Industrial Revolution uh, rode on a donkey. That's a donkey. Right? They never seen a train or anything. Uh, uh, that's a Henry Ford quote. If you ask people what they needed, they needed faster horses. Then the train came around. A lot of people said, oh my God. I'm not getting on that infernal machine. Oh my God, I'm not doing this. You know, there are people here in the audience, maybe they're like, oh yeah, I can do that, but it sounds risky. It sounds, oh, you got all these uh, uh, agencies and all this stuff. The reality is, I think the greed of everyone out there is gonna bring us over the top and allow us to, to actually free ourselves from these uh, centralized uh, organizations or governments or this, and uh, be able to actually control the actual destination. I remember my grandmother gave me a dollar bill. I think that's one of my slides. 
I didn't put the slides together. I, I, they throw them in there so I can like. So yeah, if the people, does it go backwards? Son of a bitch. So people embraced the train. Some people embraced the train. Some people got on the train. They did business. They went to the West Coast. They mined for gold. Other people didn't get on the train at all, and they stayed on the donkey. Right? But I want anyone in here who's not involved to get involved, make your own ICO, jump on an ICO. I want everyone to have a fucking ICO. How about that? Because the more people that want to get involved, or the more people that are involved, there's going to be less people out there to fuck with us. Am I allowed to curse? Jesus. You don't know what happened to me. <laughs> I feel like Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> so the people who really embraced the uh, uh, Industrial Revolution, you know, you got the Garnegies, the Rockefellers, the, who's the other guy? I don't know. Vanderbilt. They made a whole bunch of money. That could be you. So we have this uh, innovation. The innovation usually shows up without permission. There's the guys with the square wheels. We got the round wheel, they don't want to hear it. Like the Wright brothers, they had a bicycle shop, and uh, if you walked by their shop in the middle of the night, and you heard them talking, you probably thought they were crazy. So, oh, make the wings far bigger, make the engine, uh, the propeller uh, faster with more uh, cubic centimeter, uh, cubic inches, and uh, the thing's gonna fly higher. <laughs> But they didn't ask permission. If they went down to the mayor and asked, them, asked the mayor for permission, guess what? He probably would have said no. Yeah, but lucky they didn't. I mean, now, you know, you got the FAA and all stuff like that. But the beginner guys, oh, Ron Paul. Let's give Ron Paul a, a round of applause. <laughs> Most of my people worked for Ron Paul. We did all his data. Uh, I ran the volunteers, about 100,000 volunteers around the country. Uh, helped them in 2007, 2012. This is a great thing. We've been overtaxed, overregulated, overrun by bureaucrats. The founding fathers would be ashamed of us for what we're putting up with. Let's give a hand of applause for that also. Do you feel it? We are, you know. We're in a regulated world, of course, and we don't want any bad actors in the space, so we've got to uh, also think of that. You got the, I'm going, yeah, I was putting like, go, last guy had the gold on there. I mean, the, the bills. So, you know, the, the, uh, the bill's not backed by anything. No one knows that. <laughs> but, you know what, this is backed by something. You got a pretty lithogram there. You got a $100 trillion uh, Zimbabwe note. I think if Bitcoin was around back then, it would have went to like 10,000 the first, the first month. You know, I would have bought it. I don't know what, the, oh, that's the Bolivar, you know. The guy had a wheelbarrow full of them. He was going to the, uh, he left it on the side, ran in the store to get a soda pop, and uh, they asked him, aren't you afraid someone's going to steal your bowl of ice? He goes, no, I'm afraid someone's going to steal the wheelbarrow. We built a whole bunch of stuff. We got the paper ballot, the three blockchains. Uh, that's Vote Watcher. We built the Bitcoin Center. Let's give the Bitcoin Center a round of applause. Why do we build the Bitcoin Center? Because, uh, you know, we're in the back alley, so I saw a bunch of bad press, and uh, I broke all the furniture in the office and uh, went downtown and rented the biggest space I could right next to the New York Stock Exchange and built my own exchange. The regulators uh, weren't too fond of it, but it was my exchange. I built it. Everyone came in here. Most of you went in there were trading in there. It was fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> and... I said, well, you know, I'm not getting a commission. I'm not getting this. I'm not uh, charging a commission. He goes, oh, who's, uh, who, uh, who's clearing the trades? The SEC said to me, I said, blockchain. The block, I don't know. <laughs> Some kid with a machine under his bed. What the hell do I know? <laughs> 4,000 miles away, go find him. <laughs> so we had everyone in there. We had the FBI in there. We had, I was like... What do you want? I'm buying the booze too. I'm paying the rent. I'm buying the booze. What do you want from me? I'm losing my ass. Give me some money. <laughs> I sold Bitcoin at 30 bucks. They paid 120,000 a month to keep it open. <laughs> I get no respect. Though. So I got this uh, project here, Zap. Blockchain Technologies. Zap, I think, is the future. You know, a lot of people think I see the future because I always do everything years early. That's why I also built a Bitcoin center over there so everyone could wake up early, but they woke up pretty fast. And it's great. I want everyone 
here to have their own ICO or jump on their cousin's ICO or something. So we trigger financial events with the three-dimensional world data, you know? All these things are happening out here. And uh, so we create oracles, whatever, software, you know, programs that are running on servers, and uh, they'll trigger a financial event on a smart contract. I think that's the next step. I think uh, everything, your whole life, is going to be pretty e much easier. And I think uh, all these different ICOs are going to uh, need us. Many of them are calling us, and we're building stuff for outfits that have been around for a long time. And, uh, you know, we have, like, I don't know, over 100 different designs of uh, different Oracle uh, um, uh, models, you know, with the uh, uh, consensus models and stuff. It's fun. We have the Energy Ledger project we're doing with the over in uh, Saudi. I don't know why they threw that in there, but that was somewhere in, I don't want to say. <laughs> I'll go to jail probably if I say it. Decentralization, death of the IPO. I think the IPO is gone already, right? I don't think people are going to do these IPOs that easy anymore. I think they're going right for the token. That's why we have to be, a, a, you know, push this uh, forward, what we're doing. Western Union is probably going to disappear. PayPal is going to disappear. They're going to be like a blockchain. No, not blockchain. Blockbuster video. Anyone remember Blockbuster video? Blockbuster video. Ah. People said Central Bank, uh, oh, they said Bitcoin's a bubble. I don't know what the hell that is. That's my notes. Whoa. Bitcoin's a bubble. No, Central Bank's a bubble. Stock market's a bubble. Legacy financial system's a bubble. That's my dad said that. My father said a lot of things. He's helped me out in my life with the words he told me, even though he's not here now. I hope he's watching. I want to make him proud. He said, Thirio den yines and Thirio den tros. That's a beast you'll never become unless you eat beasts. So this legacy financial system is a beast. The, the uh, uh, inflationary uh, currency is a beast. The central banks are beasts. They've been feeding on us, feeding off of us, running us into the ground, working for decades, for, for millennia. People have lost their lives, given their lives away to slavery without even knowing it. You think Lincoln freed the slaves? He made the, the greenback. The greenback was like one of the first uh, American uh, fiat currencies. No, nothing behind it. And uh, so they worked us into the ground. And they're working us into the ground because their ICO is proof by cage. You know, in 1913, they made the Federal Reserve. And if you didn't collect their pieces of paper and give them back to them, right, they put you in a cage. You went to jail. So their ICO, all the other bills were uh, backed by gold. You know, all the banks, the Bank of Hoboken had a $3 bill, redeemable in $3 worth of gold or uh, three ounces of silver. So these guys have proof of cage, and they've been forcing it on us because we're stupid. You know, I'm not in this room. In this room, we have an incredible responsibility. If we actually know this, we have to take it to the next level in our minds and understand that this is the reason why you're here. The reason why you're here is one reason. I mean, I don't know, but you know what? All your ancestors, your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, all the way back to the beginning of time, throughout history, we've been slaves and we've been smashed by centralization, and now you're here. What the fuck are you going to do about it? Huh? You say, oh, that was a good idea. Back to the bed. Snooze. The time is now. There's no time ever before in history. I don't know what to do. I, I've, I don't know how to explain it. You guys got to just forget about everything. You got to burn all your ships, you know. We just landed on a beach, and the enemy's there. And after the enemy's gone, this belief system of centralization is the enemy. After it's gone, we'll be free forever. The world is a bountiful place. What happened? All of a sudden, well, it used to be one person used to work in the family. Now everyone works and we're all broke. What happened? The earth lost 
98% of the food or something? It's a fucking joke. We're in a moment of time that's your fucking responsibility to wake up and not think about anything else and not try to hurt each other. Oh, my fucking token. And that guy's token. It's much bigger than that. You have a responsibility to everyone who's going to come after us. You know, if we don't, if we don't free ourselves with the blockchain, they're going to imprison us with the blockchain. That's the reality. It's up to you. I, got, I don't think I have any seconds. Do I have any more slides? Oh, the minister told us over and over that the banks were too big to fail. No one went to jail. Oh, too big to jail, yeah. So they told us the banks are too big to fail. And I have a different approach on it. I think, you know what? I think, well, government, we put them up there. We allow them to stay there. It's because of us that they're there. You know, maybe we don't give a shit enough to, like, move them out of there. But the reality is, it's still us. We're the mob, right? The banks are not too big to fail. I think... I think, you know, Bitcoin's too big to fail. ICOs are too big to fail. Smart contracts are too big to fail. I think you guys are too big to fail. I think liberty, liberty is too big to fail. And that's my last slide. And my time's up. Ah, oh, come on. Give it up for Nick Spanos.